and then I'll read away. Okay. All right, we've got transcription has started. Recording and transcription has started. Okay, here we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, this meeting, uh, first off, this meeting may involve the remote participation by members, either by telephone or other electronic means due to the local public health emergency novel coronavirus pandemic. And that's pursuant to the provisions of Minnesota statute sections 13D.021. Uh, hello, hello again, everyone. This is the Minneapolis Pedestrian Advisory Committee Subcommittee for Program and Policies for February. Um, and it's good to see everyone. We've got a four item agenda today and we are welcoming um, Amy Barnstorff from Minneapolis Public Works who is here. So we'll, we can start off with Amy and uh, who is, has, is returning with the ADA Transition Plan for Public Works, who was here in November or October and we, uh, we, we sent a, uh, resolution after that and a resolution slash memo after that with some questions and some, uh, some presumably we're going to hear about those today otherwise so there's also a slide deck on hand take it away amy barnstorff welcome hi everyone thanks again for having me um let's quickly get this pulled up uh. Can you all see that OK? Oh, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Um, so as Peter mentioned, I was here, I believe, back in November just to provide kind of an, an update, just mentioning that we are doing a biennial update to the ADA transition plan. Um, since we last spoke, there's been some more work done on this. So I just want to provide kind of a final update on this work before we bring it through uh, council this later this week, actually. So some of this might be a bit of a repeat, but hoping to um, kind of answer some of the previous questions that you all had. So the ADA transition plan was adopted by City Council in February of 2020. Within that, there are 20 recommendations to help improve access in the public right of way. Um, within those 20 recommendations, there are 36 total milestones in order to help us reach those recommendations. And each of those milestones has a timeline associated with it. As part of the Transportation Action Plan, Public Works has committed to conducting a review of the ADA transition plan on a biennial basis. That is what we're working on right now. And really the, the point of it is to evaluate our progress and suggest any plan updates, um, continuing tr to pursue improved compliance across the city. The goals of this review and update, understand and evaluate the progress that we've made to date on those recommendations and milestones that are outlined in the 2020 plan. We are also updating the recommendations as and timelines as needed. We are also looking to update the language within the ADA plan to be reflective of our most recent policy documents. So for example, the TAP and the street design guide, those were adopted after the ADA transition plan. So just updating the language within this to be consistent throughout all of our policy documents. And the last point here is really to report this update out to the public and to city council. Taking a look at our current status in terms of progress, you can see here we've completed 20 of the 36 milestones to date. One thing I want to note is that this second column here, ongoing and successfully completed to date, this is a new category that we included just to kind of better articulate what, what's going on within these different recommendations and milestones. So that column right there is really representative of items that are con like essentially perpetually ongoing. They don't have end dates. They're annual things that we do. And so taking a snapshot in time, look at our progress right now. Uh, we have done those for the last two years and we do anticipate doing those moving forward. So we've completed 20 of the 36 milestones thus far. We have three currently in progress, four identified as up next and nine have not yet been started. So you can see we have made significant progress, but there's still a lot of work that is ongoing and to come with this plan. Something else I wanna note just with these last two items here, the up next and not started, there are a lot of this work is very linear. And so items that are currently in progress, we need those to be complete before we can move on to the next, the next action items. I apologize for the small text on this screen. Um, if you for those that were here back in November, I gave a highlight of these 
these three items and um, there's been some movement on them even since November. So I'll just quickly recap them. Um, recommendation 5.3. This is essentially improving how we track, inspect and inventory our ADA infrastructure across the city, whether it's built by the city, but by other agencies, private developers, utility companies, really just making sure that we are managing and overseeing all of this to ensure that it's being built to ADA specifications. And so we had a, last time I was here, we had put in a budget request for 2022 for a dedicated ADA and right away staff position. And we have actually, that has been approved and that hiring process is underway. And so we should have somebody on board this year to really start honing in on this work and being a, a resource for helping manage this, this work, which is great. Uh, the second item here is about addressing seasonal barriers such as snow and ice removal on our sidewalks and street corners. And so in 2020, $300,000 was allocated to help speed up corner clearing on our pedestrian priority corridors. This is ongoing annual funds and it helped bring the corner clearing time from about four to five days down to about two days. And so, like I said, this is ongoing. Um, annual funds to help keep up that level of service every year. Another thing to note within this recommendation, we are beginning the review and update of the pedestrian and bicycle winter maintenance study this year. And so more work around the winter maintenance to come with that process. The last piece here is about the sidewalk and street crossing uh, citywide inventory. And so over the last year, our staff has been working on a inventory pilot project, testing out different data collection methods to understand how we can do this on a citywide basis. And so when I was here in November, we had talked a little bit about this process. Um, we have now wrapped up the pilot project and our staff is in the process of really evaluating the six different data collection methods that they used or tested out to understand how how do we scale this? What are the, basically the scalability, the cost effectiveness and the efficiency of doing each of these different methods and applying that to how can we do this on a citywide base, basis? And so this work really is, is one of those items that impacts a lot of other recommendations within the plan. And you can see those here um, at the bottom. So something we did not have information to share back in November, but we have the data now is just a holistic look of the infrastructure improvements across the city and kind of taking a look at where we are today. So all the numbers on here are looking at 2019 and 2020 data. So you can see we built 979 ADA ramps between 2019 and 2020. This number is only city built ramps, so it does not include ramps built by private developments or utilities or other agencies. If you look at the graph in the center here, you can see that about a third of our ramps across the city are fully or substantially compliant. About two thirds have not yet been upgraded. Taking a look at our traffic signals, about 38 signals were upgraded to include APS between 2019 and 2020. Uh, if you look again at the graph in the center, about a little over a third of our signals include APS and a little less than two thirds have not yet been upgraded to include APS. Taking a look at just those, those two infrastructure types, so the PED ramps and the, the traffic signals, we have an estimated timeline of 18 to 28 years to reach full compliance between those infrastructure types with a cost estimate of $430 million to reach it. And so these estimates are really based on our current funding levels and our current material costs as it exists today. Taking a step at the very bottom here, looking at sidewalks. So we do have a um, program that looks to fill our sidewalk gaps across the city. So in 2019 and 2020, we filled 1.72 miles of sidewalk gaps across the city. Uh, you can see in this center graph here, about 870 miles of our streets include uh, sidewalks on both sides, 155 miles with sidewalks on one side, and 208 miles are either missing sidewalks or we just don't, it's missing data, we don't have that data yet. And so we are working as part of that sidewalk and inventory pilot project that I spoke about a minute ago, 
Um, once we are able to do that on a citywide scale, get that citywide inventory, we will be able to develop a timeline and cost estimate for addressing the sidewalk and street crossing barriers um, at that time. So we don't currently have that data, unfortunately, but definitely something that we're working very hard towards. So in terms of the items that are up next, looking at 2022 um, recommendation 3.4, again, that goes back to that citywide sidewalk and street crossing inventory. Our staff, since the pilot project has wrapped up, we are working to evaluate how we can do this on a citywide basis. Once we figure out the best, the, how, how we scale it, the cost effectiveness, um, really that will start feeding into bigger budget conversations about doing it across the city. Uh, recommendation 3.3, we do have fully uh, digitized APS data across the city or traffic signal data across the city. We are in the process of getting 2021 data into that system. We're about halfway there, if not a little bit more. And something that we're doing with this process is that we are working to identify data collection improvements to make sure that we really are collecting and documenting all of the different ADA requirements specifically for APS systems. And the last point here is recommendation 4.1. Um, in 2022, Public Works will be starting to update the 20 year streets funding plan and within that updating the equity component of the infrastructure prioritization. So these are just three um, kind of first glance items of what we're working on this year, um, but still lots of lots of work coming with this ADA plan. Hmm. So in terms of the timeline, uh, we began this work back in August. Um, we have been working over the last several months to develop this update uh, we provided an update to the advisory committees who are part of the development of the 2020 plan back in November. And really this month we are providing kind of this final update to the advisory committees and are anticipating bringing this to PWI or the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee on March 3rd later this week. So with that, um, that concludes what I have for you all today and I'm happy to take any questions or thoughts that you have. Yeah, we're going to go to questions and to comments very quickly. Uh, would you refresh our, my memory, please, for the new those uh, the acronyms there or the the, init the initialisms there? What those stand for? The MACOA, MACOPD, please. Yes. So the Minneapolis Advisory Committee on People with Disabilities is MACAPOD, and then MACOA, Minneapolis Advisory Advisory Committee on Aging. Thank you. Well, MACOA. Impact. Thanks for that. We have uh, some uh, uh, ask people to raise their hands if they can. Uh, we have, and uh, Julia's right up uh, to take. Uh, go ahead, Julia. I've got a couple of questions, so um, I will start with the ones. Well, I guess firstly, what is it you would like from us today? That would be. Yeah, thank you. Really, today is just um, providing an opportunity to inform you all of kind of what is in this update um, and help answer any questions within that. OK, um, I have two specific kind of questions. Um, I'm wondering when the if you know the timeline for installing APS at the downtown light rail intersections. I know that's been a concern to um, people with visual impairments um, since, since trains can't stop quickly. Um, and then secondly, I'm wondering about the sidewalk inventory, if there are ways that um, that PAC members can assist in that. Um, if that map might be available somewhere and if the sidewalk gaps will include impassable sidewalks like both sides of Lagoon uh, between Hennepin and um, the parkway west of Hennepin uh, where where you wouldn't be able to get a wheelchair through on either side of the sidewalk. Yeah, so starting with your first question about APS at the, the light rail um, mm -hmm. downtown, I don't have an idea of the exact timeline of where those improvements are happening. Um, that is something I can check in with our traffic folks about to see if they have an idea and I can uh, let you know or circle back with this group about that timeline if they have it. That would be uh, great. I know that's been a request for a number of years. Um, so knowing how to get that prioritized for the ADA community would be great. Yep, absolutely. Um, your second question about the sidewalk inventory. So. I will say the the team looked at six different data collection methods and 
each method was a bit different. Um, there were several, however, that used a tool, varying tools, but essentially looking at it, it does look at the width of like how much space people have to pass through. Um, some of the equipment was actually about the side of what a wheelchair is. Um, so understanding it, it will look at both like vertical deficiencies as well as width, as well as um, kind of the other elements, like are there cracks or other deficiencies within the sidewalk or missing sidewalk perhaps. So all of that will be looked at as part of the, the process. It's, it, we're still evaluating which method will be used, mm -hmm. but each of the methods did look at that. Okay, and are there any ways that the PAC can assist or can where can we find it when it's ready for people to take a look at? For the pilot project, that's still something we're working on internally, um, so nothing to okay. share yet on that, but um, I can, I'll follow up with our team about kind of what are the next steps for that and how does that get shared out? Okay, thank you. And um, I do have other questions, but I wanna make sure that people get a chance as well. Uh, I don't see any other hands up, but I, I'm just following on what, Ju what Julia was asking about um, where PAC could help. Certainly the, the, where the gap, where, the, where there are measurements and specific tools involved is one thing, but um, where, to the extent our sidewalk gap map is missing it does not show sidewalk gaps is there you know uh uh how can we you know are, I, how would we report those i think you know where do the pack people are out there walking we see we see gaps that aren't on the that on that aren't on the map on on the known map or the map of known sidewalk gaps um uh are you welcoming or taking those reports yeah, so the best way to do that is through our 311 process, just because that, that's the best way that we can organize that data and have it moving forward. Um, so I would say that that's the best route to go about notifying us about any any missing gaps or sidewalk gaps. All right. Um, do you have a timeline for the pilot project that, uh, that you mentioned? So they tested out in 2021, they finished testing all of the different methods. So now it's just a matter of evaluating it and um, working through kind of how do we scale it. So I don't have an exact timeline for that. Um, I anticipate that that those discussions will happen throughout this year um, with bigger budget discussions to come. So uh, we would expect the data collection to occur yet this year or with future budget, future budget item or? Yeah, I would say we, we don't have a timeline in place. I would say it's unlikely that it would happen this year since it would likely be a larger budget ask. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's unclear, I would say not this year, but um, in the coming next few years, hopefully. <laughs> okay, thank you. I would thank you for that, thank you. Yeah. And Going back to our participant list for other hands. Um, Julia, uh, we're going to come back to you. We're, we're coming okay. back to you now. So yeah. Thank you. I I have kind of a bigger picture question. Um, hearing what you were going through, it seems like some of it. It's hard for me to see exactly how this relates into what the people that I know with disabilities and limited mobility face in terms of barriers um, and some of the, the seasonal barriers, but um, just ongoing barriers to uh, basic accessibility. And I'm wondering, it seems like this is driven by the ADA, but I'm wondering what kind of, um, what kind of user experiences or observation has been part of this process or might be part of it to really focus on how disabled people who do not have car access uh, get around our city or are unable to and how that changes depending on time of day, time of year, um, weather conditions, what people are actually doing in their lives and then how that, how usage might impact prioritization. Yep, so there was a extensive engagement process through the development of the plan back um, in 20, I believe it was in 2018, 2019. 
um, for the development of the 2020 plan. And so a lot of that information and engagement happened during that period um, throughout this this process, this update. Um, we are not doing a large engagement effort. It's more about just taking a evaluating the progress that we've made on the recommendations that were laid out in the 2020 plan uh, through that engagement process. And so there's a forget exactly which chapter it is. I believe maybe chapter two talks about the entire engagement uh, methodology for this plan um, provide some of the um, kind of the key feedback that was heard through that process as well. And so we're not updating that part of it at this time. We're just um, taking a look at our process or progress on the recommendations that were outlined. OK. Thanks, Julia. Um, and uh, looking around again, um, uh, I don't see any hands up. So if there anyone who I can't put their hands up would like to wants to uh, weigh in, please do. Otherwise, we will have uh, we'll wrap this with with Amy with our with our thanks. I, Austin, hello. Hello, thank you. Uh, Julia's question made me think of another follow up question to that. Um, I'm curious if you have an answer or any insight of if then are there any plans in the future to, you know, kind of circle back with the community, do some additional community engagement to like to see what their feedback is on these plan updates? I'm curious to know if that's if that's part of the plan as well. Yeah, during this particular update, no, um, but that's not to say in the future updates um, that that wouldn't be part of it. So I think since we're only about two years out and we're still that that engagement is still fairly fresh. Um, we're not doing it at this time, but I think it is something that we can think about for future updates because we will um, we will be updating this plan every two years and things change and we need to be able to adapt to that. And so I think that's good feedback to think about for a future um, future update. Thank you. I'm following up with that. I'm just kind of curious. I think the piece that keeps sticking for me is knowing how many people um, I talk to who use the street rather than the sidewalks because the sidewalks are just not accessible for a decent portion of the year. Um, even with the curb ramp clearance not done to the uh, standards that you might need if you're using a wheelchair, you can't, you know, count on it being clear and free of ice. Um, and I am curious if where that conversation is at or if how that fit in. Julia, can you clarify? Do you mean particularly around like winter maintenance or just? I mean, primarily winter, but not not only winter. Sometimes it's been signed like sign storage can be a barrier. Um, people keep their trash bins um, and recycling bins blocking the sidewalk at times. It just if you're somebody who's using a wheelchair or a walker and you're going through Minneapolis, you can't necessarily count on being able to get along on a sidewalk. <laughs> In winter, it's like they don't even try, but even in summer, there's there's barriers you may not anticipate. Um, so I, it, in my observation of usage, people with disabilities are disproportionately using the street in winter, especially. And I, I know that this is about the ADA, but is that information being picked up? And if so, how is it being um, understood in terms of what the city is deciding to do. Yeah, and so our our best process for that um, is 311. That's how everything gets put into one place and organized and disseminated where it needs to go. I will say that the sidewalk and, and street crossing inventory project will also help identify some of those barriers and be able to prioritize those um, across the city for improvement as well. I, some of them seem chronic and seem to be so fundamental to the structure of the sidewalks and how we like we have our drainage co-located with our curb ramps which creates particularly icy or um, uh, slippery not level conditions depending on what the storm um, and melt situation is so some of it seems like stuff that would take a long time potentially to address um, our conversations happening around that when it's almost like it's built into the system so the city uses or follows MnDOT ADA guidelines for all of our 
ADA infrastructure across the city. And so we designed to that that standard. Um, beyond okay. that, that yeah, go ahead. That I get that I think that's kind of fundamentally what I was trying to get at. So we're designing to the ADA standard first and foremost, not necessarily to the ways people are using the infrastructure or what people are reporting about the infrastructure and barriers to use. So in other words, the real question is who's drawing the standards and are any of them, do any of them need wheelchairs? And probably yeah, not. Yeah, basically. <laughs> not necessarily something you have to, you would can inform us about, but it looks as though the standards are written by people who don't need them. Thank you, Neil. And I think that is summarizing it. 65 year old guy who doesn't, who refuses to walk on the sidewalk all winter because I'm damned if I'm going to break my hip to prove that I'm a law abiding citizen. I can guarantee you, um, and I'm not angry, I'm just saying, um, but it, it, it's hilarious how bad the clearing still is. You know, the trouble is climate change enters into this nonsense. I mean, the, the paradigm for clearing the streets is 50 years old, and we've Got a Tennessee's climate now, and, and and the conditions are all kind of vaguely not the ones we're used to. And I'm damned if I know how the city's supposed to clean the streets, but they're god awful. You literally can't get anywhere between the first snow and the beginning of April. And those aren't that's just the way it is. I've been trying to think all year how the heck the city's supposed to deal with that for less than 10 million a day. Because it would take an unbelievable amount of money to actually plow the streets so they're adequate for an unable bodied person to get from one block to the next. I mean, the side streets are absolute garbage. But of course, they're, they're up to the standards, which proves the standards aren't adequate anymore. Not your problem, but it's in some right. feedback here. It's right. something to tell, to tell your, your higher ups that the standards are, are worthless, they're just absolutely not adequate anymore. And um, I, my heart goes out to you, but I'm damned if I know what to do because I don't know what to do about it. Hey, thank you, Neil. I really appreciate you jumping in there because I think you really summarized what I was trying to <laughs> I get think that's at, what you which were is like, about. yeah, if we're, are we designing for standards or for how people use it? And yeah. and I get that the constraints are often around designing for standards, but you highlighted the things I was trying to get at, Neil. So thank you. And I agree with you. I'm also not trying to put this on you, Amy. I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around no, yes. how, what all this is doing. You're, you're the and poor person who gets to tell us what, what you're doing and why it's, it's I, I don't envy you. Because it's really, it's really pretty bad out there. But um, I'm glad that the, 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 the corner clearings are great. That's a good program. I love that. And, and we uh, appreciate the, the comments and feedback on that. And um, I think there will definitely be more conversations around winter maintenance as the the winter maintenance yep. study starts being updated and reviewed. Right. So yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like you that, we'll be in touch. Appreciate that, Neil and Julia, and <laughs> and for sure, for sure, Amy. It's nice to. Uh, I mean, uh, I think there's a lot of promise showing her that you know, where the winter maintenance is uh, is integrated into the ADA uh, you know uh, presentation today. And it's certainly a, with with a separate, the separate track we talked about earlier that you've got a, you know, a winter maintenance surveys going on. Uh, it says is gives me some, some hope. <laughs> I'm not promised. <laughs> um, and uh, Amy, we, uh, we really appreciate you being here. If anybody has any last words, let's share them. Otherwise, we will uh, we will let Amy go with our with our thanks for being here and coming back so soon. Um, yes, and, thank you. Uh, we pre appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Yep. Good to see yeah, you. Thank you all so much for letting me come a second time. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a thrill. <laughs> good, good. All right. Yeah. Uh, Next on the agenda is connected with connecting with elected officials, Peter Vader, PAC member. Uh, we built a uh, sign up sheet uh, in uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets last week. Last month, I mean, we shared a, a link out. Uh, I'm looking to see if it's worth it for everybody. I assume it is. I've tried it in different ways myself. Um, I've had one entry that is my own, Emily Kosky, a council member of Ward 11. Ward has, uh, uh, as a, 
has uh, agreed and indeed invited invited me to meet. I'm waiting to hear from hear from their from Amy's uh, excuse me, Emily's staff on that. Um, has anybody else had any luck with it, uh, either with the uh, uh, elected official business or on the sign up sheet? Uh, look, uh, um, um, I just want to check in on that and if um, and hear from anybody on that. I don't know. That I saw the link. You must have sent yeah. it out. I, I didn't must. see it either. I know okay. you sent it out. I remember you talking about it, but I, I haven't yeah. done it. I'm sorry. And of course, I could just call people, but I haven't done that either. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I don't even want to call Andrea because that's, you know. I'll, I'll make a note to send it. Yeah, send it along. If you Again. Want. Yeah. All right. So the next question, Peter. Um, my yes. my councilman is um, I'm thinking his name. Um, what's his name? Suzanne comes and covers him. She's his representative, Andrew Johnson. Oh yeah. Um, he, would it be better for me to try to see somebody outside? I mean, since he's he's been fairly active in this, or at least my understanding is he's somewhat active in it. Um, do you still want me to see him, or would it be better for me to try when I'm ready to see somebody else? Does it my matter? feeling, and my feeling is that not, not everybody is going to want to do it. So if you, uh, so, so the workouts, and, and as we're as you're reminded, we're not, you know, we live in our we live in our wards, but we're not as PAC members, we're not affixed to our wards, right. unlike the BAC. Yeah. So your my answer would be, you're please, you're free to yeah. and would freely see see anybody you anybody you like, anybody you think okay. you might have rapport with, or or not. And the last go round, we went, uh, I saw my council member and then Ward 13s as well. And um, good. All right. It is. A, I, we also have a probably, a, I think, I, I, I don't know what to agree, a, a bike ped coordinator is needed to, uh, as part of this process, but we have a annual report, I think, coming up would be, would normally be coming up in March or April, right? To the, to the, uh, to the city council or to our uh, to, uh, our uh, transportation uh, subcommittee, whoever that is now. Uh, Abigail, is that was that is that April, March, April? In any case, uh, we, that oh would be that gosh. would be coming up too. We have that, that that's coming up, isn't it? Yeah, we have to figure out the exact date, Peter. But um, yes, it's coming up, and I uh, owe Abigail uh, a call and some coordination. And Abigail, I saw your hand up, so if you want to say more, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I have nothing to add, Chris. I know that we uh, reach on talk. Yeah, last this last year it was uh, the end of March, but it's really any time in the first quarter. So I think yeah. our goal is to do it later, as late as possible this year, so that everybody can kind of fall into their position. And then with Matthew leaving, we should probably have some more logistics to work out. Okay. Cool. That Thanks, Chris. Good. Thanks, Abigail. So I have a question about, I guess this, I'm, I think this is a fabulous idea. I'm happy to talk to elected officials. Um, my question is like, do we have any specific like talking points or discussion points you want us to bring up or like what exactly am I like supposed to be asking are my elected officials about? Um, previously, um, and this is to speak to my experience doing it with them too. Not, specific, uh, not necessarily about specific projects or 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 like not talk about necessarily I and E kind of uh, topics, but more like um, our meeting. our uh, program, uh, our uh, our, uh, our uh, you know our more of our uh, mission, etc. And certainly, you know, it gives us a chance to remind people what we're what we're what we're doing. And you know, thank and thank them presumptively for for, for the support. Um, uh, what I'd like to what I, my my what I imagine is that we'd have people sign up and that we that we we talk about we talk about that ahead of we talk about that ahead of time. Um, so uh, in general, yes, more more of a mission. You know, here's what PACs here. What's what PACs here to do? And we 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 appreciate those. City Council support that we get. Um, OK, that makes a lot more sense. And like, sorry, I apologize if that was like a really elementary question. I just I no, missed no, no. I'm happy to reach Not out. Not yeah. elementary yeah. at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm like, I'll, I'll talk to Elliot, but I like I don't know what I'll say, except I'm part of the pack. And like, truthfully, too, I spend 
this might be another question too for the group to consider. Like I spend quite a lot of time in Ward 2 as well because I'm by the university all the time. So like, would it make sense to connect to Ward 2 as well? Would they be willing to talk to me? I don't know, but I think there's a lot of good ideas here. So it's good to get some direction. Right, and part of that, yeah, appreciate that, Austin. The, uh, and I don't want to talk over anybody, but that was, uh, that was the, uh, the uh, well, we, we took these meetings last time with, with BAC members who are ward affixed and were, and in, in both cases, I was, we were coming with our, you know, with our, uh, our general pack zeitgeist. And then my, my back partner, BAC partner was there to talk about, here's what's going on in my ward, you know, these projects, these projects. So it was kind of, it wasn't, a, we, we talked last month about maybe take these meetings with BAC, but that was kind of a, that was what, what I, what identified as sort of a, a different, uh, we had sort of like a little bit of cross purposes on, on that when we we're trying to, what I think for, as PAC members, we're trying to get an idea, you know, we're trying to get across the, our, our mission and goals as maybe more from a policy and mission standpoint than for particular projects, you know, to watch out for. Um, so, um, in the, in the last month, uh, I did reach out to our, the, the, the BAC uh, chair who responded recently and is inquiring of their, of, of uh, uh, the BAC membership as to their, as to their interests. So we'll take that up, we'll take that up too. Um, but yeah, definitely the, you know, uh, sign up for anybody you want, uh, anybody you think you're going to report. I mean, uh, CM Payne is a great idea because they're, they're new and, you know, may, and probably has a lot of things thrown at them. My council member is new, so that same. So I'm looking forward to that meeting as well for that for that thing. Um, who's in uh, the university? Covers the university, Elliot. Who's that? Is that uh, Robin? Huh? I, I mean, uh, Austin. Who's that? Yeah, it's who's Robin. that? Robin. Robin. Yeah. Right. 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 Who's a firebrand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And hey, hey, Austin, I. Uh, j just to add one more thing, I, um, it's a good question, and like this year is a little bit different in that, it, like obviously we have a bunch of new council members, so a little bit of just like education about like what the pack is and does is probably also a good talking point to bring up. Like, hey, we put out resolutions, we send them to you guys, we comment on all of the projects and that sort of thing, just to like let them know. Um, which maybe they already know that, but that's probably another good thing to add in there. All right. And absent anyone else's comments, uh, which are which are all welcome. Um, uh, I noticed. There is, go ahead. Yep. I, the I do not have. I have view only access, and I don't know about others, but that might be um, just for uh, making sure people can sign up for the file. Okay, I will look into that. It is linked in today's uh, uh, BCC yep. message I sent out to everyone. And so that link is showing up as view only, uh, yeah. Julia. Okay, yeah. oh, that's just that's just wrong. Uh, <laughs> I will, I will, I'll, I'll do some incognito link uh, 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 opening of that and see what I see what I see if I can fix that. And then I'll send it out again, and absent any more comments on that i'll leave it i'll leave it leave it at that and we'll, we'll uh, mm -hmm. keep on taking it up again and then if anybody is interested in maybe going together um i would be up for that too what fun so i'm kind of shy so i'd, I'd love that <laughs> <laughs> i'll do it with you for sure neil <laughs> yeah let's voice ourselves on some really Unsuspecting. <laughs> yeah. Let them know what the pack's all about. Ha, yeah, that's right. right. And it's just as likely we could find out. Right, and I, in my case, with uh, my council member Koski, they're inviting uh, to a uh, uh, not in person. Uh, oh, yeah. Too. So, so leave yourself open for that too. Right. Yeah, that's true. They may not want to get together in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though. City Hall is very big. We can meet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move on in the agenda. Uh, we're going to, then with the next up, we're going to talk about member applications, um, which is uh, a annual process for at least half, seven or eight of us, or eight of us are uh, seats are open every every year, open for applications, and um, uh, so that process we talk about every year in possible areas of 
focus in terms of recruitment and messaging. And um, we got um, Chris and Julia and me to, are, are leading that. Chris, do you want to start us off? Or? Yeah, maybe just a, a quick word and then you all can uh, take it and strategize as uh, as you wish. But um, main point is just that uh, I think applications open something like March 18th. I'll send out an email with the exact details and how to do everything, um, but that's coming up. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure also to flag all the members who are up for uh, needing to reapply so that um, we don't have anyone fall through the cracks. If you want to continue on the pack, um, definitely reapply and, and do that. And um, yeah, this is my first time. Matthew used to handle this, so this is my first time doing this, but I, I think we've got, got all the details down. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I can help you through the application process. You've all done it at least once, so I assume you probably you might even know more than I do. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's all I got. All right, opening March eighteenth. You have a closing date on that, Chris? I want to say it's like three weeks or something like that. I'll I'll, I'll add that in the email as well. It's uh, it might be a full month or okay. more actually, but um, and and they do like. Um, sometimes reopen that or, or just extend it uh, rather. Mm -hmm. um, but I will uh, get all those details and put it in an email for you all. And we um, we send it down to the clerk's office. I believe so. I I, I think you can probably email me. I'll. I'll I actually have to look into some of that just to um, get the whole thing down. But right. um, uh, last yeah, I think time I, I did it, I sent it to the clerk and to Matthew. He wanted a copy, so yeah, yeah I, I would say like any anything you submit, like throw me and Millicent on there, um, or or at least me on there, and and we can we'll just make sure it gets to the right place. But um, the clerks ultimately are the ones who field all those applications. Okay. And ably so, my first application, I followed up any number of ways, and they, I, I got a response within 20 minutes, just like you know, with with suggested <laughs> correct corrections and clearing up formatting errors and things like that. So uh, um, it was a really a, a real positive experience just applying in the uh, in the first place. So um, thanks. That's good. Other subjects here are uh, areas of focus uh, in terms of uh, recruitment or uh, areas, uh, communities, or uh, right. either geographic or demographic, or right. wider demographics about who uh, who we would like to, uh, where we think we might see improvement in terms of uh, representation, uh, distribution across the city, et cetera. Um, this is a this is this is a topic that uh, a, that comes up. Every year, it's like where, you know, how to uh, in, how to invite a wider range of people. How do we get more, more people to apply it and uh, and participate? Um, you know, Donna is not only um, and disabled, handicap blind, but also from the north side. And I don't know who, who else is from the north side. I think nobody. And of course, I don't know that she permanently dropped out either. But she sure expressed zero interest in in continuing the zoom meeting so i don't know if she's going to reapply um we should look into replacing her if we need to yeah i think i agree i, I mean that that'll all be a part of like the application process neil uh yeah, based well, on that's, oh that's right that, that's part of how you evaluate yeah based, on, based yeah. on who applies and and who doesn't and um right. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember what kind of groups we've actually approached, like the neighborhood organizations, I guess. But I, I'm noticing a, a sort of a widening of who's engaging around um, pedestrian issues on um, our local Twitter, which I think might be promising for, if not getting some of the individuals who are, you know, talking more about winter maintenance and different things. Um, to apply or let, getting more people to share it with their networks as well. Like there's a lot of um, 
unfamiliar avatars and, and names and um, just more conversation than I've ever seen before. So I'm hopeful that that might indicate something shifting locally, whether that's just on Twitter or elsewhere. How about uh, gun uh, advocate advocates? Any... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> More pedestrians ought to be fully armed. Um, what are you saying? I, have a, I have a friend who is um, got retinitis pigmentosa, so she's losing her vision, and she's connected to the Foundation Fighting Blindness. So I'm wondering, I could talk to her if she knows anyone that lives in the city who's interested or who has pretty intense feelings about how we deal with pedestrian access for people that are blind. I'll see if she has any suggestions. Ooh, that's great. Appreciate that, Barb. Yep. Julie, appreciate you jumping in there on the on the on what you're saying uh, on uh, on social media. Um, I wonder if anybody else attending, uh, uh, you know, Austin, Abigail, uh, if, if in your in your circles, your sphere of, spheres of influence and in social, and et cetera, are are, are are you noticing that kind of uh, any pedestrian interest or more or less? Well, this is Austin. I really don't, I don't know. I really don't know. There's so much going on in the world, right? It's hard to like gauge people's interests. What I can say though, is like I, every time I see an opportunity for almost anything, like I think as Julia mentioned, like social media is just so great to just contact people. And so like posting things on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, I think that's always a good strategy to try to get people. Cause you know, each of us have common interests, but we probably have pretty diverse friend groups. And so, you know, just by mm -hmm. us reaching out to folks can sometimes, you know, go a really long way. Aside from that, there's other community organizations that we could partner with, you know, like if, if we wanted to, we could try and then, you know, go from there. That's always an opportunity as well. But I'm all for social media. It's like so quick and easy. We can get the word out pretty quick that way. For sure. Uh, any um, other, uh, I can't think of anybody, uh, can think of a, a social, any of the, any demographic slice that we're not, that we could particularly be interested in our, in the pack. Uh, I feel like we've got the, uh, we've got uh, older, say older demographics sort of uh, <laughs> covered. Uh, or That's you know, very rep good representation against there. And so certainly, as I'm looking at my screen here, anyway, uh, Austin. <laughs> uh, uh, but just any, uh, any um, um, my co-chair Julia. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I one of the things when you say that it reminds me that people's demographic information is split up from their application, so yep. it's. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I know we've tried to remind people who are applying for the first time to be aware of is, is to share within their application um, perspectives, perspectives and experiences that they bring that the PAC could benefit from. Um, because we won't necessarily that, inf well, we don't see it, but um, Chris or whoever ends up looking at it won't necessarily have that um, aside from address. And we've sure. also talked in the past about being explicit about offering um, to help people with applications or to talk through what being on the pack is like. We've done um, articles to share kind of what we found meaningful or, or why this is something that we show up and do um, through Streets of Men. I've made little uh, social squares in the past to create a visual to go along with information being shared on, I think, Twitter in particular. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that we've tried. We haven't done physical flyers as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. And I don't know, one of the other things is knowing, yeah, yeah, just with the kind of amount of change that we've had is that, is there something different we communicate than we would otherwise around yep. what's expected of us? 
for who would find this particularly meaningful or how, what our expectations, how they, those have shifted. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chris, uh, if I can ask if you have an answer or any opinion of what, what would be this? What would be the city's posture here? Is like, is there, is there, is the, does the city have? A, the, what are the city's recruitment uh, um, methods, or you know, what do they make? How are those these uh, these uh, availabilities made known? That there's that there's seats to apply for. Um, I think it ties in also with our city council member visits. You know, that letting our city council member know that then there's that, that that we're inviting. Uh, uh, New members and uh, et cetera. Yeah, so so what I know about it is that um, like all of the boards and commissions that um, that's oh those applications are open all at once. So there's like some level of kind of putting that out there for that. I would say for okay. specific okay. committees, that's that's probably more down to us kind of putting it out there um, to recruit specifically for this. And then in terms of you know who we're looking for. Um, that's laid out in the ordinance, uh, the, the enabling uh, ordinance that created the PAC um, has some language which which I don't have in front of me right now, but sure. kind, of, kind of talks about like generally geographic representation, different sorts of demographics um, uh, and, and things of that sort. So um, the, the, those are things that are taken into account when when we pick you all <laughs> like it like who the right. members are um okay. uh, but aside from that in, in terms of just kind of putting it out there you know i think a lot of that comes down to like the folks on the committee and um the ideas you've all brought up so far are good ones and um yeah there's there's some general kind of city push for applications but it's not like hey come to the pack <laughs> from like the city's account it's more like <laughs> hey look at all the boards and commissions sure. that are open. Okay. it could be it could be a chance for us to reach out to some uh, parallel committees that to do like recruit together a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking of uh, some of the equity committees that the aging committee committee um, for people with disabilities, where if they have information to share, we could work to share a cluster of them. Um, although that might be just adding more work for ourselves and I don't want to have more ideas than I have <laughs> energy to execute them. But. Sure. Appreciate that, Julia. It's at the same time, if there's some action we can take out of this uh, uh, this agenda item today, I, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to I'd like to write that like to write that down. Um, well, I definitely think at least from like sorry for what I interrupted, but I definitely think from my no. perspective, it's like my action item is to like at least post this in one place where people will see it and like try to talk to at least one organization that will that will see it. I mean, I can do that. I feel pretty well connected. Maybe not everyone can do that, and that's okay. But I think just mm -hmm. making that action item to say, hey, I'm going to talk to at least one person about this somewhere, and then the word may spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's excellently posed, uh, Austin. So other members here are Barb and Abigail and Julia and uh, Neil. I say, would we would we agree to all do that? Yeah. Each do it in our in our own in our own way. Do yeah. our own. Like I said, circle. I will I will talk to my friend who's visually impaired and um, see if she has connections, and then follow up yep. with the person and talk to them through the Foundation for Fighting Blindness. I know she's been to meetings. She has lots of friends that are um, either visually impaired or, or totally blind. So I will see if she has anyone in mind and follow yeah. up with that. All right. Awesome. I can definitely commit to doing that. Um, <clears throat> if we, if anybody would like a social square, I probably need a little bit of a push to do one, but would be happy to. Um, but I don't know if that's necessary. A social square dance maybe. Mm -hmm. Social square dance, yes. Yeah. We, we can use the, the, yeah, that one, yep. 
Uh, Did we do that one here? Intersection? We, we, all I, we almost got it. <laughs> I don't think we have it. We should try that someday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got to start blabbing about the pack, see who comes in. Um, I'm wondering, probably don't know yet. I'm just thinking out loud about how many. Okay. Might all right. Be well, here, but that's not necessarily relevant anyway. Okay. Um, Thanks, all then. We'll dispense with that. We'll have dispensed with that agenda item then, and we'll move on to uh, uh, winter maintenance. Uh, jo Julia Curran pushed out a uh, an impressive deck of uh, various uh, pedestrian slash sidewalk affronts, uh, and um, I don't. I didn't see it linked in our agenda. Is it yet? available to be presented out to the screen uh chris millicent, Christopher millicent. uh let, let's go ahead and show it i think it was supposed to be on there so yeah but let, yeah go. uh do you have it i can you guys can watch it on my screen if you want to yeah let me see <clears throat> The winter sidewalks one, correct, Peter? That's right. There, you go. Correct? there we go. All right. Nice. <laughs> uh, Julia, do you have the screen available to you? I do. Yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. Then I will. I will hey. hand it to you. Ah, <laughs> Oh, just tell me when you want me to go to the next slide. Oh. <laughs> I um I wasn't quite anticipating us using it quite as a slide, so um I'm thinking through what might make sense. But um basically I think what what we were talking about was making sure that we have discussions around winter maintenance um in this meeting before the end of winter when everything is still fresh in our minds and the you know the rage is um at a high level and i did a presentation for a neighborhood group looking at a shoveling program recently and i included phil in part because um i you know i got to become friends with phil on the pack um until he died and one of the things that i still have anger over is that our friendship was um shorter than it needed to be i didn't realize as i was first on the pack that that his attendance was decreased so much in the winter because he couldn't count on being able to get to the meetings, even at city hall and coming from a downtown residence. And so I just, you know, there's a lot of people on my mind and doing all that. And I, for those of you who didn't um, get to meet Phil, he was a PAC member who uh, lived in downtown Minneapolis and served on the PAC for, I don't know how many years um, until he died of cancer, uh, I think, maybe the fall before the pandemic, although it, you know, it starts getting fairly blurry um, and was just a really uh, awesome contributor and uh, member of, of the pack and particularly participating in PNP meetings um, when he could count on being able to get here. And um, yeah, a, a good friend. And I wish that our city did not have infrastructure that prevented all of us from being able to be in community together and deny each other the, those little those little meetings where you get to know people, where you find out that maybe you're not just pack members serving together, but you have things in common and um, enjoy laughing together. So um, I think Millicent, maybe we can just kind of go through them in the background while there's probably 30-ish of them. So um, yeah, I, the, I know all of you know, as we look at our infrastructure, there's patterns in the ways that it fails us. And I thought Peter's suggestion that we um, each take a moment to share an example of sidewalk conditions or winter conditions would be good, um, help us get in that frame of mind. So if people want to Share anything they've noticed or experiences they've had, what's been getting their blood boiling or surprise, great occurrences, cleared sidewalks that were unexpected. 
<laughs> My lord. I don't yeah, think you'll be surprised by this. Mm -hmm. uh, who's Neil. seen this so far? And you, you tipped it off in the first segment of our meeting too today, Neil. What's your oh, what's right. your your uh, mm -hmm. your method is, is to is to avoid the sidewalks altogether. Oh, I just I don't, I don't even bother. Yeah, I'm as cold as brass. I don't, I'm damned if I'm walking on the sidewalks. I'm not doing it. And if yeah. the city, the cops can hope come up to me, I'll say, yeah, I'm no kidding. It's dangerous stuff. Shit. Um, yeah. Well, it's equally dangerous to walk on the damn sidewalk. So I mean, what, what's your what's your what's your beef? Um, um, but these pictures are pretty great. <laughs> it's just a great I have thousands this of is, them if anyone special. has any this kills me. It doesn't do you no. any good to live on, say, 38th Street to clean the sidewalk down to the bone when the melt at the curb mm -hmm. makes anybody think four, four and a half times about crossing through there anyhow. They can't, they can't access. Yeah. And it's going to be that, yeah. that way every night all the way through March because, of course, that's how the melt works. And not uh, how it used to work. Holy cow. The belt, that's so that stuff cold. happens all winter long because it'll have a warm day and things will melt yeah. and it'll turn to ice. Yeah, it's and then it'll melt that, again and, and you'll clear it off and it'll turn to ice again. I know. Yeah, it's been all winter, all winter long. All winter. And it's going to continue to be because we're going to have these spurts of warm temperatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, this must be Hannibal. There's a lot of Hennepin represented. Is that is that the Ukraine right there? That's that's Kiev. Yeah, really. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's Kiev. But I, too. I mean, I mean, and whenever these photos came from, I mean, it could have been just today. I mean, are they, you know, there's, I mean, I mean, oh, I was absolutely. out, I was out, I was out five miles today, and it was just, it looks, it looks just like this. We haven't had uh -huh. appreciable snow at all over the winter, other than some accumulation. It just, but it's uh, other than it just <laughs> anything you see in these photos could be you could have taken. You could have taken today, yeah. so so yeah. It, so it doesn't it doesn't take any forethought at all. You, know, you just got to do is uh, get, get out of your house. I keep polling you, Austin. I know, but it's uh, forgive me. But the uh, what is your like what like what is your uh, when you've got to go out during the day? It's like what is can you get to your car and where you live? Is it or you get to the the corners? What is your what's your typical experience on sidewalks and stuff in your in your neighborhood? I think like this whole experience and thanks for calling me into the conversation because like I guess the first thing I see these photos is I think of like my privilege like I can walk on ice and if I fall I'll probably be okay but I'm able-bodied and I'm young and so like I think a lot of like what if someone doesn't have the privileges that I do and how do they get around this city you know if it's really bad I can take my car I own my own car I have a driver's license not everybody has that and so like the advocacy I think that we do is probably one of the most important things that we do because so many people just get in their car and they drive off, they don't think about the other people. And and we need to try to educate folks on like, yes, this is a very real, real experience. And like you drive past this every day, but it all looks the same to you. To someone who actually has to navigate sidewalks, like it can be really difficult and it's difficult for me. And you know, I can, I can afford waterproof boots so I can walk through puddles and it's fine, but not mm -hmm. everybody has that experience. And like, that's, I think, the most important thing I have to say is like when educating folks on this, it's it's really important to remember the voices of those that this most like directly impacts. And that's that's what I think of when I see this. So this is a really excellent presentation. Thanks for putting it together. Mm -hmm. Happy to share and, any of it with anybody if it could be of any use. The other thing I can think of is that we can, I mean, right now I can see all this and it's familiar, like a lot of people have said, and and I'm aware of it and I see it all the time. And I experience it all the time. But if I were um, visually impaired, it would be terrifying to go out my door because I wouldn't know day to day mm -hmm. what to expect. And um, there's nothing we can do about the fact that people's front steps get wet and, and get slippery and people have to learn how to deal with that because that's not the city's problem. But this is the city's problem, the way the streets are. It's it's always terrifying to me that bus things, I know they're better, but they're just awful. Um, it's, I see so many people, I mean, I'm old, but I'm not, I'm not in a walker. I have moderate uh, capabilities to get around. I'm worried about falling because I've had so many surgeries, but 
But I see older people, much older than me, walking around with walkers and can't mm-hmm. get past their. their uh, Nelson, can you can you go back to the diagram one? Two or three. Yeah. 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 Oh, here we go. Um, That's the melt. This is. This is the melt, and this one I think we don't talk about, and I haven't heard it talked about by the city at all. But city regulations um, say that all private properties have to drain not directly into the storm sewer from the impervious surface, but across the sidewalk with the hopes that the yard, if there is one, and the boulevard, if there is one, will pick up some of the the water and allow it to, you know, um, filtrate in before it hits the, the gutters. Whereas the street, whatever sheds to the sides with, you know, they have, there's a slight curve to roads, will go into the drainage. So we have constant melts from things that's forced across the sidewalk. And the sidewalks aren't built to the slopes that the streets are for drainage. And the ground in the boulevard gets frozen. There's just like this, this really, um, we're silent about the city policies that are actually exacerbating problems with walkability in winter. And that's one of the ones that um, I, I don't know why, I don't know how we talk about, it. I don't know how we get to have conversations with the city. It was completely any role of the city in worsening sidewalk or conditions or walking in winter in Minneapolis was ignored in the winter maintenance study, including. Is this, is this, oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. I just want to say, you know, this looks like in theory, it would work in the summer when there's grass Mm -hmm. that could absorb the water runoff from the sidewalk. But it doesn't matter because in the wintertime, there's a foot of snow in the in the boulevard. So where would where would the the melt run off to in a perfect world? Where would it run off to if we could design it and the city would do it? What could we do to make the runoff go somewhere when there's a foot of snow in the boulevard? I honestly have, I, I, the only thing I can come up with is that the street is what we've designed to drain and we just have to take the street back. I mean, I don't know, Millicent, I agree, appreciate your question a lot. This is, um, can I this say- This is a visual city diagram? Hmm? No, this is not. This is, I use um, this program or app called Street Mix that lets you play around with like, different parking lanes and drive lanes and stuff. And sometimes oh, city see. people use it. And then I added my own little diagrams. Right. For this. Wouldn't, wouldn't that impervious impervious sidewalk work if we had all the city sidewalks where the water can just drain down through the concrete instead of having to depend on an angle for the runoff to go somewhere? Would that, you think that would work if it was frozen underneath? No. They, no, they I mean, that's the that. problem. If it, it would work in March and April and May and all the way through the end of October. But during the winter months, when there's a freeze and a melt and a freeze and a melt, you're gonna have frozen ground underneath. A little bit might go through, but not not enough to make it really safe, I don't think. Do you, Julia, do you think it would be? I, I would not think so, um, but I think the city's tested impervious pavers or have been. Um, I, Peter and I walked and looked for some that we couldn't find in the winter on the far west side of Minneapolis. And then Niels also showed us where there used to be some outside the first precinct. And I don't believe those are still there or if they are, we couldn't mm-hmm. see any difference. We've checked them like at least twice, I think, Neil. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not aware of any that have been developed that would work, especially given how frozen our ground likely gets. I will say too, um, the one thing I want to add is like, it, depending on the scope of this of this presentation, we could sure. certainly take some photos of some metro transit stops that are impossible to access. Um, it's just like the other day I was on Washington downtown and this is like downtown Minneapolis and there was a pile of snow in front of a bus stop and the bus driver motioned for me to walk over to a street essentially to get on the bus which is mm-hmm. unsafe. It probably breaks metro transit protocol. They probably don't want that either, but there's no other option when, when the transit stops aren't properly uh, shoveled and the snow is removed. So I think that's another thing too. Yeah. If it's in the scope of this, it, I think that would be a great thing to add some photos of inaccessible transit stops as well. I should probably give more context. This, this was literally just something to send out so that we could have um, some visuals to, to get ourselves thinking. It was It's not something that has another 
um, planned use at this point. So it, we've had conversations with the city periodically about winter snow maintenance um, that that are very infrequent and that have so far not included things like do sidewalks drain and how do they drain and really do they drain because that's not what it looks like when you're out there. Um, so I, as far as the, the Metro Transit, the other thing I've seen happen periodically, including one time downtown and at the 19 stop specifically. So it seemed, I don't know, I was, if it had been a different, if it had been the 25, I would have had different feelings, but at the 19, like a whole over six feet tall of snow piled right in front of the bus stop sign. I I've also seen it over on um, Dean Parkway and Lake Lagoon, like where it seems like some plow drivers see bus stops as a place to set snow. <laughs> it's, um, it's I've seen it on 42nd. I've seen it on Cedar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm heartened There's, a little bit to see some attention being paid to winter maintenance at least from this from uh, this the, the city side that we're being surveyed and there uh, that there's some action on the on that on that on that score. It's you know and I and I and I, and I consider myself chief among the people who is like as a city you know the spring comes and they're like and they're like winters in the back winters in the rearview mirror it never happened and that's what but what happened what, the result of that is is that there's no that we're seeing. There's no body. There seems to be no body of knowledge. That it's like a, a city where winter hits every every year. Mm -hmm. That there's no accumulated knowledge as, as to how to how to alleviate the 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 obstacles to people getting around. Um, I bring up the Mac. So the the metro, the Bonfire Air, Airports Commission, the MSB Airport. Snow falls. They have a you know they have a, they have a manual which I picture you know it's this thick. And it's like they have a playbook. It's like what, how much fell, what kind of snow was it? So they have a, they have a, they have a, they have a, um, a strategy for every type of snow that they can recognize in terms of depth or, you know, is it wet? Is it dry? Is it, you know, is it freeze under to freeze over? That's really so. And um, that that us as a as a city have nothing like that. Have no just as every winter hits every year and we just start over from scratch is a is is really puzzling so to see the winter maintenance the kind of i, I don't know who among us is being is going to get uh the privilege of being uh, uh interviewed or surveyed by the by public works in this next uh coming period um i hope we can keep these things fresh in their mind you know it's like the you know the the, the drainage issues my my um path generally is to if i'm going to go out to walk this time of year I go, I head straight for Richfield where I walk on the streets, you know, where they're, uh, where it's asphalt, where it's plowed and it's, you know, they, they, they dry out and everybody's expected on the streets. They have, a, they have a few sidewalks, but everybody else is, you know, but as otherwise they are, they're essentially shared streets. And that's the least stress uh, walking I have uh, during the, during the, uh, the snowy months. I, I will say that I've seen improvements since they started sending the letters out about clearing uh, mm -hmm. My neighborhood has gotten significantly better, and we can walk in our neighborhood. There's a couple of houses where it's kind of iffy, but mostly I'm seeing people sh make sure that they get their streets, um, their sidewalks in front of their home shoveled down to the cement. The problem is right. now it's melting, and at night it freezes, and then, you know, you're out there with an ice pick if you, right. you want to keep it clean, which is uh, hard work for mm -hmm. for anybody, hard work, especially when you're in your 60s or something so but i have seen some improvement at least in my neighborhood i know it's not certainly citywide but i have seen that letter help especially my corner neighbor <laughs> right but they went out again this year that's good to hear mm -hmm. i um uh, i went over there one time no i shouldn't say that <laughs> well, uh, it's a nice pick <laughs> so Chris uh, sent an email out to PAC in the last uh, uh, few weeks or month of uh, asking people who are interested in being surveyed by the uh, as part of a winter maintenance uh, uh, initiative on the public works part. Um, I'm not sure when that is when that is to happen. Oh, is that, Chris, yeah. is that is that progressed? Uh, yeah, it should be soon. I I need to get back to all of you on. Uh, 
who will be interviewed for that, but um, Amy, okay. who was uh, speaking earlier, is the one running that. So, uh, oh, I think probably in the next month or so, those interviews would happen. I would think. Did I sign up for one of those? Uh, I think there was more volunteers than there were spaces, so I have to look. Oh, okay. I have to look at it real quick and just figure out exactly who. Um, who makes sense to to go? Yeah, because I know, I know, I know. Okay. Neil, Neil, you had volunteered. Peter, you had volunteered, and kind of said like, if others want to, that's that's fine. So I just gotta right. comb through those emails and uh, figure out the the best group. Yeah, I think I also threw my name in. Yeah, I I think they were like okay. I, pr pretty much. I think the the whole executive Everyone? committee. I I, I, I just, yeah. I, I just got. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll I'll get back we're to you already guys. Yeah. This week on uh, on who uh, who makes the final cut. <laughs> right. Julia okay. never has anything to say about what I mean, and so so I don't know what <laughs> what you would actually contribute. I will. Uh, okay, so I'll contribute this quote from a book on designing storm sewers. Yeah. Um, when I it's it's been used for decades, and um, and when it addresses the question of drainage. Frozen ground is almost impervious, and if a warm rain should fall while the ground is covered with snow, the runoff from the rain and melting snow may exceed the rainfall. However, this condition is rare and is not generally considered in the design of sewers. And basically, like the the whole, as far as I can tell, the, the design conditions of climate breakdown in particular, where we have precipitation or melt um, in addition to snow berms and everything is just not within the design considerations of sidewalks from their origin. Mm -hmm. I, it, it feels intractable in terms of addressing it via sidewalk clearance and especially when the city does not acknowledge its own role in creating windrows at every single corner and every single alleyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I just want to just revisit that the upcoming surveys anyway, um, is that whoever gets chosen, let's try and maybe coordinate and funnel our uh, our uh, our comments and uh, grievances through whoever is uh, chosen, if it's not, you know, all of us. That makes sense. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure uh, what else we can take from this uh, discussion. We're waiting for it, but uh, think had we discussed a potential resolution to request that the city of Minneapolis come and talk to us about winter maintenance because it's been quite some time since their last update to us or was that am I thinking of some other conversation so I'll just say this um Matthew was <laughs> was about to start the update and uh obviously left the city so um the update right now is that there is an update needed. We've committed to an update and there's not currently a staff assigned. So yeah, I, I mean, if you wanna pass a resolution, you're always <coughs> welcome to pass whatever you want, but um, that's just I kind of the, the reality of where we're at is that it was about to happen and the staff who was leading that left. And we have three open positions that hopefully uh, we'll be hiring for soon. Um, didn't my, that happen with Lisa Searney? Like she was in charge of the winter maintenance stuff and then she left right after talking to us. We well, so her? she 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 wasn't I so this was like the update that was planned, which, which like Lisa Searney was not in charge of of the mm. update. Like she was in charge of like the pilot program or like kind of like running the pilot mm -hmm. program, which was something that happened mm -hmm. and was reported back on and um she was due to come back before she left uh and and then she left but kind of like a separate uh same topic separate sort of thing i i guess um but like that the update is something that's in the tap it is planned okay we did have a plan like we we had a staff assigned who who left uh, um so okay. I, I mean, that, yeah, I, again, okay. like, yeah. like, 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 if you want to pass a resolution to be like, hey, this is something we really care about, Here, like, 
like you could you could do that. I'll I'll just be honest. I don't know how much that's gonna change the timeline of providing that update. Okay, so here would be my suggestion. Um, based on this, we are talking about talking to city council members, a lot of whom are new. Winter maintenance is topical, timely, and the, the update from the city is unlikely to actually, since it's an update to a, a really insufficient and kind of terrible study initially, it's unlikely to be great. So maybe we could pass a resolution that calls on the city to examine its role and its policies that impact um, sidewalk or wa clear walking routes from drainage to plowing patterns. Um, and if we pass that resolution, it would give us something that we could take specifically to city council members. So pass it mainly with the city council members in mind and as a, a starting point for the conversations that we want to have before winter is completely over and while it's still in their minds. So they'll know why we're relevant. Hmm. That means we have to write one now, pass it, and then get on with it. Um, and we can still talk about it in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. All right. As an urgent um, item. Well, our next meeting is March 9th, right? So we right. have a little time to Correct. get there before well, the, right. yeah. the full meeting. Right. We got yeah, I minute. think we could have one written. Yeah. Um, and I've. Is that something we want to post to, dra to draft and have ready for March or March for, for a week from from uh, next Wednesday? Um, it's not. It's the night. I'm having a little trouble hearing. I I would propose that. God. Yeah. Oh, it is next. I know. I still need to do edits to Barb's um, other resolution draft, but I have. Good. I'd be happy to throw something together. Um, either tonight or tomorrow. I'd be glad to look at it too. Yeah, you come in on review. If you just honestly email to, to all of us, I feel like that would be the quickest way to get some feedback. Yeah. OK. And if it seems like it's just not right for the meeting, like that's fine, because as Chris said, this isn't probably, you know, Public Works is doing whatever Public Works is doing around this, but it, it feels like it could be something that um, helps with that conversation with, with elected officials and maybe raises I, some of the issues that Public Works is not talking about with us even when we ask. I'll, I'll just add, I, I think that's a good approach, like to just okay. say, what, say what you want. Like I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm like, we're, we're gonna pick this up as, as soon as we can or like when it happens and like taking a stance mm -hmm. and like putting out what you all want, like, um, us to look at makes a lot of sense to me. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, with a new um, head of public works, um, not a bad time to do it either. Mm. Good point, which Neil. Maggie oh. takes over pretty quick or already has, I don't know which. Is, do people have specific things that I should make sure are in there? I was not taking notes through this meeting, so. Otherwise, I'll see what I can pull together. I don't mean to put people on no. the spot. No, you you know what to put in there. Oh, it'll be it'll be a ten thousand words. Just just go for a walk and you'll you'll have plenty. <laughs> you'll have plenty <laughs> there will be many you'll exclamation have, points. You, it'll, you'll you'll have a for three volume resolution if you go for a walk for ten minutes with your dad. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yes. Peter, your uh, Peter, your voice is kind of uh, crackling a little bit. Crack. Wow. Darth Vader style. You're no kidding. Like a robot. Wow. <laughs> yeah. A scrambler. You're being lost by the CIA. Or something. Holy cow! Oh, you're silent. Oh, you're silent, Peter. Ah. All right. <laughs> 
No good. Thank you. I just, I, I, I just wanted to assure Julia and everybody else that we've 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 done a really good job on like uh, uh, we've got a good team writing resolutions, writing and editing. Uh, you know, I'm glad uh, uh, Austin is uh, contributing the last in the recent period too. Um, I think we've got really good um, perspectives that bring like through a sequence of drafts, we get to a really, we've been getting to really strong resolutions, I feel like. So, so you know, yeah. anybody can have at it, Julia included, right? And it, we're gonna get to the, I think we'll get to we'll get to a good place um, at, at, with a finished product. So, um, and, and so like my audio was a little sketchy in the last few minutes. So I'm taking, Julia is gonna take a first, uh, is gonna a, a draft something we can get, we can edit and be have ready for the, for the next uh, full pack meeting a week from Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Right. And yeah. and my overall, I think what I'm aiming for is um, to kind of talk about how long it's been since we've had um, a robust report back to the pack, mm -hmm. and that we also found there to be insufficiencies within the initial report in regards to some of the city's direct responsibilities, and that we urge city council specifically around. Um, how sidewalks are designed and whether or not they drain in light of climate breakdown um, and the city's plowing and uh, of both alleys and streets and the barriers that throws up um, as well as the way it recovers some sidewalks depending on boulevards. Um, yeah, and do something that we can share with city council members and make our appointments and talk to them about in more detail. Good. Timely for all those reasons, and uh, if not mentioned, for the you know, uh, for the uh, welcoming our new public works director too. That kind of that's good timing there too. So, so we want this to also be like welcome, and here is our list of um, grievances. Welcome <laughs> here. Let's listen to us batch batch now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Good. Well, uh, thank you for taking that on, uh, Julia. Step one on that. So I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. now, that brings us really right up close to six o'clock. Anybody has any um, announcements uh, for the uh, for the group here? Otherwise, we will uh, after that we'll uh, we'll adjourn. Which Julie is what uh, on the cancel? Hmm. There's two Julies. I okay. yeah I'm I am on both video and phone. Oh, you are okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Sometimes my internet is not great for to speak over, so the phone's more reliable for oh. participating. But I like seeing all of you. Yeah, I like it. It was good, really good discussion today. I really appreciate it from everybody, um, and thanks for showing up today and being here. Um, and we'll uh, we will call that a full program and policy meeting for February. Thanks all. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks I, for going through those slides.